authorizing. Access granted. Welcome to Sakurum Laboratories. Thank you, Texas, and welcome back to the Lab Trainers for another episode of Pokeology, a show where each week we become one step closer to understanding how Pokemon live in their natural habitats. My name is Professor Sakurum, and today we're going to be taking a look at one of the most gallant Pokemon in all the land, and that Pokemon is Gallade! Before we get started, here are the topics we will look at to research our Pokemon. First, we'll take a look at some general information. Then, we'll see what the Pokemon looks like. After that, we'll figure out what the Pokemon eats. Next, we'll be where we can find the Pokemon. Then, Dexis, our supercomputer and Pokemon database, will let us know what the Pokedex says about the Pokemon. Then, we'll see how the Pokemon generally behaves, and then, how it survives. Finally, to wrap everything up, we'll go into some battle strategy. Let's not wait another fortnight, so here we go! Gallade are classified as the Blade Pokemon and are dual Psychic and Fighting type Pokemon. The average height of these Pokemon are about 5'3", which converts to 1.6 meters, and they weigh somewhere around 114.6 pounds or 52 kilograms. Gallade are one of the two possible final evolutions for Curlia, and it evolves with the Dawnstone. And did you know? Gallade are only capable of evolving from male Curlia, so Gallade are only male. And another thing is that this Pokemon is capable of Mega Evolving, and upon Mega Evolving, Gallade gains a bit of muscle, because the average weight of Mega Gallade is 124.1 pounds, or 56.3 kilograms. Are you sure it's muscle? That's rude, but I'm sure it's muscle. I think. Gallade are bipedal Pokemon with a similar appearance of a Marmillo class Roman Gladiator. They've got white and green skin armor. This armor allows for Gallade to be able to take some hits and using the psychic energy it possesses, this Pokemon is able to extend the length of its elbows and sharpen them, which is Gallade's most notable feature. Gallade's head is covered with green hair that is hardened to make a type of helmet. This helmet is topped with a teal colored head crest. You'll notice that Gallade has red eyes as well. On its cheeks, we see that Gallade have white spikes that protrude out. These spikes act as ears, but are also incredibly powerful psychic power sensors, which allow it to sense and predict the movement patterns of an opponent, so it can properly counter and parry an attack. Now, one of the most interesting things about Gallade are the red horns that are in its chest and back. These same horns can be found across their entire evolutionary family. It is said that these horns allow these Pokemon to read the emotions of people and that they are the source of their psychic power. We can also note that Gallade is incredibly slender, however it does have some very round hips. Some might think this to be odd, but actually this type of body structure helps Gallade, as well as humans, with balance and strength according to some athletic experts. Now if we look at Gallade's legs, we can see that they are slender and that their toes are infused with their legs. Some may think that Gallade looks drastically different to the rest of its family, and that's because of the Dawnstone. For some reason, when a male Curlio comes into contact with a Dawnstone, its entire genetic structure changes. What's even more interesting is that Gallade's ability to use psychic energy changes to manipulate its own physique rather than be an offensive ability. But this Pokemon is also capable of going through another drastic change by Mega Evolving. Upon Mega Evolving, we see that Mega Gallade's green armor turns white except for the hair on its head. The elbows on Gallade become permanently extended while in this form and have sharp red plates forming along the edges. The teal head crest becomes larger and starts to hook which makes it more of an offensive threat. The white spikes on Gallade's face also expand in size and become much more powerful. The one thing that seems to grow smaller, which I find interesting, are the horns on Gallade's chest and back. I believe that this is the reasoning why there are now red plates on Gallade's arms. The presence of psychic energy moves to a more offensive location, so that way Gallade is able to do more damage all around. You can also see that from the back of Gallade, there is a white cape-like appendage growing from the horn. This cape is quite durable, which allows Mega Gallade to protect itself from powerful incoming attacks. 
Although Gallade are capable of digesting meats in their system, these Pokémon choose an herbivore lifestyle. This is because of their ability to sense the emotions of other beings. Yes, I know I said humans, but I believe that it's not just limited to that. Because Gallade can sense the fear within weaker Pokémon when it comes around, it empathizes with that fear. So, instead, it will eat berries and fruits. What's also interesting is that Gallade can go longer periods of time without eating if it is surrounded by positive energy. Gallade are not commonly found in the wild. These Pokémon like to keep a low profile, so there's no notable habitat for them. Instead, you may come across one that is protecting groups of wild Pokémon, but that's an incredibly rare sight. However, if you do want a Gallade of your own, you're going to need a male of one of its pre-evolutions. You can find Ralts in the following places. Hoenn's Route 102, Sinnoh's Routes 203 and 204, as well as Route 208 and 209, Johto's Route 34, Unova's White Force, as well as Kalos' Route 4, and Lumio City, but if you're looking for a challenge, you can look for Curlia in Sinnoh's Route 203, 204, and 209, as well as Route 212 and Kalos' Friend Safari. Researchers from all over grow curious about Gallade as a Pokémon. So Dexis, would you open up Pokémon Research Log 475 and tell everyone some more information on Gallade? Only if you accept my challenge for a duel. And how will I do that? So you deny my challenge. Would you just do your job? Haha, <laughs> that means you forfeit. Okay, let's do it. The researchers of Sinnoh, Kalos, and Unova have this to say about Gallade. A master of courtesy and swordsmanship, it fights using extending swords on its elbows. Sinnoh continued their research in conjunction with Unova and found that, when protecting someone, it extends its elbows as if they were swords and fight savagely. Lastly, Johto, Kalos, and Hoenn broke off to make another report which says, because it can sense what its foe is thinking, it attacks first out first, fast, and fierce. Most Gallade prefer to live alone but there are some that live in small groups of smaller Pokémon and serve as a protector. Gallade have a naturally chivalrous personality and put duty over pleasure. When you do find this Pokémon out in the wild, it will more than likely be protecting smaller and weaker Pokémon from predators. For the most part though, Gallade spend their time meditating and practicing their sword technique. This Pokémon can also be found strengthening and sharpening its blades by cutting boulders. But, if it's put together with another Gallade, a sense of rivalry appears, and the two Pokémon will compete with each other to prove who is the better and stronger Gallade. Well, it's kinda obvious that Gallade's primary form of defense are its elbow blades. One of my favorite things about how Gallade actually battles is that as a psychic type, it doesn't normally go for a mind over matter battle style. Instead, Gallade has them work simultaneously, which gives it a well-balanced fighting style. They use their psychic abilities to read the opponent's movements and attack accordingly. The only time that Gallade has a hard time battling is when fighting a Pokémon that uses tricks. An example of Pokémon that do this are Gengar and Zoroark. Gengar is difficult for Gallade to pinpoint because Gengar is able to vanish into thin air and is unaffected by fighting type moves. The reason Zoroark can be tricky is because it uses illusions to mess with Gallade's head which can send it on a runaround and tire out Gallade. But normally a Gallade will keep a steady mind and be able to defeat Zoroark due to type advantage. But I have to say that my absolute favorite thing about Gallade is that it is capable of teleporting and it uses this to get around quickly during a battle and if things get too hairy, Gallade can even use teleport and get away easy, fast, and safe. The first thing you're going to want to know about Gallade is that they are Psychic Fighting Type Pokémon, which gives them a weakness to Flying, Ghosts, and Fairy Type moves. Their typing also gives them a resistance to Fighting and Rock Type moves. And finally, a Gallade is strong against Pokémon that have a Fighting, Poison, Normal, Rock, Ice, or Dark typing. Dexis, can I get you to display Gallade's base stat chart? I want our duel so I don't have to listen to you. Fine, then I'll do it myself. Let me tell you something, it is impossible to get good help nowadays. Aw, uh, you're no fun. Anyway, this chart here compares the stats between Gallade and Mega Gallade. 
Starting at HP, it's like every other Mega Evolution, where the base HP stat stays the same, so both forms have a base 68 HP, which is really, really low. Moving on, we can see that regular Gallade has a killer attack stat of 125, but then once it goes Mega, this thing basically becomes One Punch Man and has an attack stat of 165! Regular Gallade's defense stat sits at a low 65, but when it goes Mega again, this Pokemon becomes a little thicker and has a 95 base defense stat. Gallade's special attack in both stats stays the same at 65, so nothing spectacular there. Gallade's special defense also stays the same, but it still sits at an impressive 115. I'll say this now, Gallade isn't that slow with an 80 base speed, but Mega Gallade definitely puts in some work because this guy grows to a decently fast 110 speed stat. I feel bad now, can I do the next portion? Sure thing my friend, go for it. Gallade has access to one of two abilities being steadfast and justified. Steadfast raises speed by one stage every time the Pokemon flinches and Justified raises attack by one stage if hit with a dark type move, but upon Mega evolving it will lose whichever ability it has and gains the Inner Focus ability. Inner Focus prevents the Pokemon from flinching, except if it is hit during a Focus Punch charge. Nice job, Dexus. I'm proud of you for knowing that. Well, it is recorded into my database, so it's hard not to know these things. I guess you're right. So, let's move on! For our first set, you'll need to have a Gallade with either a Jolly or Adamant Nature and the ability Justified. You have a choice here of either the Life Orb or Lumberry items for it to hold, but you'll need to make sure that it has the EV spread of 252 attack, 4 defense, and 252 speed. Then give it the move Sword Stance, Close Combat, Zen Headbutt, and Knock Off, and you're good to go. Our next set requests a Gallade with a careful nature and the ability Justified. Give this Gallade the leftovers item to hold and spread the EVs to 48 HP, 96 special defense, and 164 speed, and give it the moves Bulk Up, Drain Punch, Knock Off, and either Safeguard or Substitute. And our final set asks that you have a Gallade with either a Jolly or Adamant nature and the ability Justified. We're going Mega here, so give it the Galadite to hold and spread them EVs to 4 HP, 252 attack, and 252 speed. Then give it the move Sword Stance, either Drain Punch or Close Combat, Ice Punch, Knock Off, or Shadow Sneak in the third slot, and Zen Headbutt in the last move slot. And there you have it, Gallade, the Foreseeing Swordsman. If you think I missed anything, or you learned something new, let me know in the comment section below. By doing that, along with liking, subscribing, and following the socials, you have multiple entries into the Sakurum Raffle, where you can win one of the sets that we talked about today. If you need more information on the raffle, please be sure to check out the description for more details. With that being said, my name is Professor Sakurum, and I will see you guys next time when you visit the lab. Dexus, sign us out! No! Overriding. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like. If you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so. If you are still unsure about subscribing but still want to see more, then click on one of the links on the screen to see more videos made by the professor. To stay up to date with work in the laboratory, check in the description where you will find the professor's social media links. Thank you for visiting Sacrum Laboratories and have a wonderful day.